Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We are back with another week, so of course that means we have that three up, three down, where we're covering those comic book market trends. Real quick, before we get into the list this week, you may have noticed simplemanscomics.com has a brand new look, doesn't it, Jack? Oh, yes, brand new, brand new layout. Um, it's more than just a fresh coat of paint, Brian. It's, it's, it's a total overhaul. Um, user ability, uh, both on the desktop as well as the mobile. Um, the the cl clean nature of the website, it's absolutely amazing. Excited about that. Yeah, so be honored if you guys would check that out, simplemanscomics.com. Also, if you go over there, we have a giveaway going on right now. Our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics, we have a copy of their X-Men number one, Ji Hung Lee virgin variant, right? Yes, yes. And that was limited to a thousand. It's long been sold out. Uh, doing well on the secondary market, I believe 40 to $60 regularly on eBay. So you can get one for free. Head to the website, uh, enter the giveaway. A lot of great news uh, on the website. Uh, Simpleman's Comics merch on the website. You can even buy comics on the website. So a little bit of everything. Uh, so just be sure to be on the lookout, simplemanscomics.com. Right, and we'll also put a link to that giveaway in the description of this video, multiple ways to enter. So make sure you guys check that out. And that contest closes a week from today. But with that being said, we're gonna get into the three up right now, starting with the first one. And we are talking about Nova. We talked a little bit how, hey, some of these prices for these books are going back down where we can obtain some of these copies. And then poof, the new cycle came out and the books went up. Right. And, you know, we're sitting in a, a, a pandemic, a quarantine that, you know, it's starting to ease up. But the reality is we're still largely sitting kind of stagnant as far as major Hollywood news is concerned. But things have still started to progress. And more importantly, the rumor mill is still is still churning. So there's still those scoops coming out from those Hollywood insiders. And, uh, you know, one that has really kind of stuck over the last couple of weeks coming from Mikey Sutton, who we've talked about on the channel, um, has a major impact on the comic book market when he says that something is going to happen. And he's been talking strongly about Nova. And it's not just about Nova, because we've talked about how that's an obvious play, right? That Nova's clearly going to end up in the MCU, but more poignantly about where he will place an MCU. Yeah. But there'll Especially be a, with Adam Warlock. Yeah, the talk about Adam Warlock and the, how that's going to play him with Galactus. The talk about the Annihilation storyline. Um, the talk about uh, Agents of Sword, uh, who is essentially the Space Shield. Um, all of these things have spiked books and have really kind of excited the comic buying community. I mean, it's one of those things, like, I, I would say buyer beware. Um, certainly, uh, Mr. Sutton, a lot of his, his prognostications have panned out. Um, but we always just say that because you know you don't have you don't have major news sources yet picking up on um, these types of news. But nonetheless, this this type of news is pushing multiple properties that we're going to talk about in the three up portion of the show. So sticking with Marvel, we got another upward trend from them this week, and we are talking about Spider Man twenty ninety nine. Why is this one going up right now, Jack? Well, while Nova seems to be based so much in things that I can just really can't argue with right it's just based on things that we've seen already begin to play out in the mcu there's already those seeds planted this one hits me more from left field um i've actually said that i think that people are over investing in spider-man 2099 because that's the character of course that we're talking about here uh now spider-man 2099 i think has incredible value coming out of into the spider-verse i think that he's set up to be a major player in the sequel and that's not why we're talking about Spider-Man 2099 today, because apparently there are rumors coming from those same circles where we've heard about the Nova rumors, um, that there's going to be a Spider-Man 2099 live action television show on Disney+. Plus. Now, this would involve some major hoops being jumped. Uh, like, number one, my first major question would be, why, if we're doing a live action anything, are we skipping Miles Morales? I mean, not really skipping because Spider-Man 2099 is certainly um, an uh, older character, but Miles Morales would seem to be the more obvious play. Yeah, weren't um, they talking about like Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield? And well, that was some of like the... Um, the dream casting? Kind of, yeah, dream casting. Um, there's been some actors rumored to be attached to this, but again, this is one of those ones where... Um, 
you know, I would say shout out to Mikey Sutton, shout out to, uh, you know, TiVo and Lords of the Long Box and that YouTube channel and what they, what they do. Um, I'm not, I'm not dispelling it at all. Uh, it's certainly moving the market. It's just, it's something that I'll, I'll, I'm waiting to see on this one because this one caught me more off guard. It wasn't something I would say um, paying attention to. Either way, the point is we're just reporting about it and it's having an effect on sales. Now, Spider-Man 2099 number one is a classic book. It's a book we've talked about on the channel, like it's undervalued because it's just always going to be important. And the first appearance of Spider-Man 2099 is a preview. So it's really like that first full, you know, book that you're getting. But ASM 365, it's seeing major, major spikes. So you're getting volume from Spider-Man 2099, number one, and you're getting major price spikes on ASM 365, especially that newsstand copy. This is a tough book because of the size of the book. It's a thick book. And the black front cover and white back cover, real tough book to get in good shape. Yeah, this is also something, especially if some of our viewers are new to this hobby, that's spiking right now. I would hold off on this. That's just my personal opinion because I think if you're a collector picking this up, I would hold off until this all dies down. I think a lot of this heat right now is good reason, but if you're picking this up for your collection, hold off, let it come back down because it will because I personally don't have Spider-Man 29 in high regard. Great character. And no doubt we'll, we'll see a spike, but oh, yeah. me personally, this, I would hold off on it. No, and, and, and it's great advice, especially because we know how the cycle works. So again, if you're, if you're new, that's, that's an amazing, uh, amazing piece of advice there because we're talking about it today. So the spike is happening. Um, if this comes to fruition, Brian, what I, you and I both have been, you know, Spider-Man 2099, take it or leave it. That would blow everything out of the water. Live action Spider-Man 2099 on Disney plus would be huge. But it's going to take some time before that ever comes to fruition. So you have time. Be patient. Yeah. But the last one we're talking about three up this week is constantly in the news and constantly talked about on this channel. Of course, we are talking about Boom Studios. They just announced two new series, right? They announced that creator owned win from James Tan, but they also have a new Mega Man miniseries coming out. Oh, and that's not it. We're talking about the, the Tom Taylor, one of the hottest uh, names from DC Comics. He just announced his new series where it looks like you're going to get a real cool creator-owned Boom Studios kind of looking like almost a superhero type of, uh, of book. So a uh, lot going on. And we're, the first two picks, we got to talk about it because it's affecting the comic market, but it's, it's based on rumor. It's based on prognosticating things that are going to happen in the future. This is different. Coming out of this kind of like shutdown of the pandemic, when things all of a sudden start to look to open back up, Boom Studios came busting through the door in the last week with just piece of news after piece of news after piece of news. And it's easy to overlook any one individual thing. But I mean, think about it. New series from James Tinian, the writer of the current Batman series, Hot as Fire. Then you got Tom Taylor writing a new series, writer of Deceased, writer of Suicide Squad, teasing a look at possibly some new Super Sons with Stephanie Brown right now on Twitter. Um, and Tinian's also currently writing the hit boom series, Something's Killing Children. Yep. So you're looking at two of like DC's top guys um, in, in a, I'm going to be honest with you, a thin DC Comics roster right now. And, and they're doing their creator-owned work with Boom. We got two new announcements for two new series. They're going to get a lot of attention I promise you we're going to be talking about them on other programs on the show because that's just where, where the market is at right now. Also, we've got Bleeding Cool reporting daily about the amazing sales that Faithless 2 number one is doing. Yeah. Um, you know, you're talking about over 17,000 copies of a number one issue reportedly of a a volume two number one during a slowdown where some comic shops haven't even been able to open. Like the state of California isn't even opened up yet. Like the, it's really, really staggering. So, you know, we, we have a great relationship with boom studios and we've talked about boom studios a lot, but this is like well-deserved at this point to acknowledge that this week they have come out swinging and it's going to set up what we talk about now for the next couple months. And that that is why we said this Netflix deal that they did is a is a big deal because they it's not just about the the stuff that they've already done but the stuff that they're gonna have coming up the pipe. 
And the thing to take note of also is they just announced wind and it's already hitting final or cutoff, I believe next week. So if you went in on that, yep. and I know there's a lot of uh, comic retailers out there that were, have been scrambling, getting in on those uh, exclusive variants for, for that number one issue as well. There's the three out portion for us. Do us a favor, click that thumbs up button. And if you're new to this channel and you like comic books and pop culture, please consider subscribing because we always have content going up on this channel. But with that being said, we're going to shift now to the three down portion. Just because they're down, we often say these might present great buying opportunities. But I'm going to say no for this first one just because we're talking about Rob Liefeld. So Rob Liefeld has a lot of reasons to be on the upside of the list right now. Uh, Snake Eyes Dead Game is getting a lot of attention. Uh, there's a lot. You can laugh and sit and go, oh, I don't care. You can look at the art and go, it looks like a Deadpool ripoff. Um, you can judge it however you want to. But we talked about this when Major X came out, that there is a fan base for Rob Liefeld. And I'm going to tell you right now, let me be the first to say it, they're mobilizing for this Snake Eyes I've seen a lot of people say, I've never read G.I. Joe, but I'm going to read this. So there's a lot of reasons that, you know, he should be sitting pretty. I've also seen some gorgeous store uh, retailer variants, including a beautiful three book set from none other than our channel sponsor, Frankie'sComics.com. Um, absolutely incredible. Uh, so there's going to, that, a lot of that stuff's going to get attention. But Rob, he, uh, you know, he, he falls into, I think, the same thing in this pandemic that uh, even sometimes our president can fall into where he gets on Twitter and he gets it's an emotion and then it's 25 tweets in a row. And then the next thing you know, um, the media is only talking about the Twitter. So now we're talking about Rob Liefeld. We talked about him the other day, right? We talked about his kind of interview that he did and he was talking about uh, – uh, Deadpool 3 never going to happen. Didn't do him any favors in the media. And now he's, he's, he came out of nowhere, uh, essentially, with a Randy Orton RKO for an entire decade of comics saying that all comics from 2000 to 2010 uh, are basically garbage if he was to have a fire uh, or a flood that he hopes that those are the comics that are damaged. Now, he's taking uh, uh, an entire era of comics away that gave us some incredible storylines, uh, some of the ones that we're, we're talking about now from Secret Invasion to, uh, to Annihilation. Uh, you know, these are storylines we're talking about right, right, right now, um, as well as DC Comics and all of the things they did with Batman. He went on to completely discount Scott Snyder and say that like after Frank Miller, the next biggest effect on um, Batman was uh christopher nolan and went into that whole thing and just one of those things where it, it, it seems pointless he didn't ingratiate himself to the community um it's just more negative to talk about rob i felt at a time like i said where he's got a very positive big thing going on right now there's something that he could be putting all of his time energy and effort into promoting but instead man we're talking about him because you know, he insulted an entire generation of comics and comics creators. Imagine, Brian, if that was like the prime of your career. That's when you did most of your work. How would you feel seeing Rob Liefeld say that your entire decade was all for naught? It's garbage comics. I wouldn't feel any sort of way because Rob Liefeld's that guy that graduated high school in 1992 that's still hanging out at high school parties trying to make people think he's important. He's not. People are buying Snake Eyes because it's Snake Eyes. That's why I'm buying it. I don't care about Rob Liefeld. He constantly whines to get himself in the noon cycle. And then what was that last book he did? X, like as in Strikeout. But either way, Rob Liefeld's down. I'm not a fan. Either way, we're going to move on to the next cool trend, the next downward trend, and we're going to talk about Walmart variants. Man, there was a time where Walmart variants was the, the heat we we're talking about it was on the up portions. Yeah, and it well, we're still taught they're still doing well. This is still something that I'm gonna get argued about, even putting it on this portion of the list. If you were to look right now at the most popular current the art germ, Captain Marvel. Right, but if you were to look at the most current popular one right now, you'd be looking at the Walmart Strange Academy variant, which is currently selling for like fifteen dollars. So somebody would argue with me and say, Well, Jack, it's selling for three times you know, what it's selling for at Walmart. And I understand that. 
Um, but here's why we're talking about this. And this is a cautionary tale because we get a lot of messages from the comic community. We get a lot of people who reach out. We talk to um, those members of our Patreon community. One of the things we try to do is be available for advice. And one of the topics, Brian, that I, I don't know if you've felt this way. I know that together we've gotten this a lot. Is But if you've noticed that these Walmart variants, so resellers, investors, collectors, they don't know how to play them, right? They don't know how to feel about them. Uh, and we, we've seen these enough to notice trends and the trend being that as soon as one gets discovered, right? Because they're not announced in advance. We don't know they're coming. So somebody finds one, posts it all over social media. The first few that hit eBay, astronomical prices, usually $30, $40 type prices. That gets everyone excited because the ROI on a $5 purchase plus tax, you look at like $535, depending on where you are, what state in the country, uh, somewhere in that, that range. But that purchase is going to get you a good ROI of $40. You know where it's not going to get you a good ROI? $15. Because you're talking about $15 ship. You're talking about almost $5 for shipping if you ship it right. And then you go and you start talking about, well, then you got materials. You've got your eBay fees. You've got your PayPal fees. You start looking at the gas to even go get these books. You start looking at maybe you made a dollar, $2, $3.00. You start factoring the time it took you to list this, package this, and the risk you take of a return, negative feedback from just some idiot you got to deal with on eBay. With all of that being said, at $15, it's just really not worth it to be chasing these at $5. Now, my Walmarts don't even get these books. Any Walmart by me in South Carolina, we don't even see these down here. So maybe you're lucky. Maybe right down the road, you go to Walmart and they're just chock full of these books they're plentiful you can grab them make a flip quick great if you can do that that's awesome but any collector i would tell you if you want this for your pc weight they always go down as at the supply gets out there you the only reason they're initially high is because just distribution as it takes time for countries to get them walmart also gives absolutely no shits about these so they're just throwing them out uh, on the the gondola in, in the the kind of collectibles area that they really don't pay much attention to and teenagers shoplift from. So it's one of those things that, you know, we just want to caution people because we get that question all the time. And this is a great format to do that because that is an example. That strange Academy book is a prime example of a book that was trading for $25 last week and is $15 this week. Yeah. Similar to like three years ago when it, the talk was the five and below Marvel and DC packs. Yeah. Last one we want to talk about this week for the three down portion is Anarchy. This was one that was also hot a few years ago within that DC New 52 run, but we haven't heard much about Anarchy lately. So Anarchy was always a cool character, right? A character that um, 90s kids kind of got behind. The first appearance, you know, being from that Batman series, never a book that per se took off. But anytime that Anarchy was featured anywhere – whether it was the CW network, um, whether it with the Arrowverse, whether it was Gotham, um, right? Was there yeah, Gotham? Yep. Whether it was animated, whether it was um, it just really anywhere uh, within the comics. You mentioned New Fifty Two when they brought kind of Anarchy back, and there was an Anarchy one shot, and they tied it into the Joker. Anarchy always did well, so you'd see the first appearance pop up about fifteen twenty dollars raw. Now we're seeing it regularly two, three dollars. This is a common book that any regular hunter or digger finds in that dollar bin. Um, but the thing about this is the reason why this is important to talk about is it's certainly down. It's 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 as cold as a first appearance and really a character gets, but it really plays into punchline a lot because all of the reasons that Anarchy was popular, relation to the Joker, the idea that this could be a successor to the Joker who could then go on and fight whoever the next Batman is, uh, that kind of thing has always sparked the interest of comics buyers, investors, collectors. And it's not just Batman. It's any character across the board. And we see that pretty regularly. These youthful characters get investors excited. So he's had his moments in the sun, but right now, no attention on him. Instead, our attention is on Punchline. And when you look at Punchline, albeit a female character, all of the reasons why she's popular are the reasons why Anarchy is popular. And it all stems from the Joker's immense popularity. So I say that to say this, 
it, it's a cautionary tale for punchline because you got to be careful because punchline could be the next anarchy. Yeah. And, At this, and they already got other new characters coming up too, right? Right. They're already progressing the storyline. I look at that kind of clown killer character and, and I think that that could be a character that, that catches on. But the thing about punchline is if punchline sticks though, and punchline really becomes a character of value, it would be very easy to write anarchy into this type of story to bring anarchy back. And any mention of anarchy, any bringing him back into the current storyline is going to do nothing but spike those original anarchy books. So anarchy is one of those characters from an era, whether we're talking about anarchy or Azrael, those type of characters have always kind of had that cult popularity um, similar to like Batman beyond because they were, they were created during a ge- a certain generation's childhood who now is making those buying decisions. So, yeah, I agree with what you said. And I still will pick up those anarchy books. The first appearances when you find them super cheap, just, I don't know. It's like I, one of those things where I'll I pick it up it. for a couple of bucks and just and stash it away. Cause you never know, especially if you can get it for like two or $3. I mean, what the heck, right? Right. But either way, guys, there's our three up three down for this week. Let us know. We're putting the comments on the screen from last week's video right now. So let us know what your comments are. What do you think of the three up, three down? What do you think is hot? What do you think is cold? Also, make sure you check out the new simplemanscomics.com. Enter that giveaway for that X-Men number one, G-Hung Lee Virgin Vant with Brian and Jack from Simple Man's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.